Hey, it's Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils, and today we are going to show you how to use bits and pieces of your stencils to make mini projects that would be wonderful for gifts or small decor touches around your home. Today we are using one of our rules stencils. These are so fun. They have a lot of really fun quotes. We have them for around the house, around your farm. This one is specifically for a hot tub. We were getting ready to use it on another project and had a brilliant idea to show you how to pull pieces out of this and give you some ideas of different ways to be using your stencils. We have four different projects we are going to show you today. And the first one is painting on a pot holder. We have a ton of videos for painting on fabric and I believe we even have a couple pot holder videos. So when you are using a larger stencil and going to use bits and pieces you do have a couple of options. However, you're going to want to think about it before you dive in. With this one I want to keep this stencil as it is because I love the stencil for a full project. If you don't think you'll ever paint it in a full project, you could very easily just cut these bits and pieces out and it might help fit on your surfaces. But today I want to keep it full. So that is potentially going to change how we do our projects. First with our fabric, I did get another piece of wood, just a little sign that we have previously painted and I'm going to slide it inside of the pot holder. This is going to give me a more sturdy surface to paint on so that the fabric isn't as wrinkly and it will help decrease my chances of bleeding under. Now the wood is not the same size as the, the hole for the pot holder. So I will have to move it as I'm painting. I'm going to line this up so you can eyeball it or you can use a T-square. Depends on how particular you are about your projects. And I'm going to use the stress-free zone portion of this stencil. Make sure my wood is over as far as I want it. When you are painting on fabric, you are probably going to want to use a repositionable adhesive. This is going to go on the back of your stencil to help prevent your stencil from moving on the fabric. There's not a lot of wiggle room for fixing mistakes when you're painting on fabric. So the less your stencil moves, the better off you are. We have Aileen Stick and Restick that we would like to use on these types of projects. We also have a crafter's tape, which is going to work like a little white out gadget on the back of your stencil. Today, however, I'm going to go with it and I'm going to show you painting with out one of these if you don't have one and some precautions that you'll want to take. We always want to shake up our paint really well. I chose a lot of colors today that we don't typically use. So I have to make sure they're shook up so that they don't have a lot of sediment at the top. We will not be using a lot of paint today. So we just need to get out a little amount. I'm gonna grab some paper towels because we always want to offload as we're working on our projects. So we have our paint on our reusable palette paper. This is a phenomenal product. It's Mylar and it's reusable, it's washable. You're going to put your paint on it and then wash it off and do it just like you would wash your stencils and we have a video for that. So we have our brush. This is a really good time when you are using your small stencils to use your small brushes. We like the dome brush and our five piece set is one of our favorite things of all time. However, we always have a people tell us they're not sure how to use the small brushes. The small brushes are going to be really good for this because you're covering a really small area and there's a lot of stripes and where in places that you can bleed under. So you can see that I am just holding this stencil down. We do have to be cautious that the stencil does not move. So every time you push it down, you'll want to make sure that the letters that you have already stenciled are still in the same spot. You could grab a piece of tape and you could tape it down 
onto the fabric. However, it's not going to stick really great, but it could add an extra little bit of protection for you. When we paint on fabric, we like to stipple rather than swirl. It helps prevent the bleeding under because we are going up and down rather than pulling and twirling the brush. So we are decreasing the chance of bleeding under so that we're not pulling the stencil. So I am over on my F, I'm at the edge of where my board is. So instead of going straight across, I'm going to come down here and paint my Z so that I still have that stability of the board underneath my fabric. And then once I get to the area where my board is not, I will shove the board over and then finish the painting. So when I just moved my fingers, I felt my stencil move completely. So now we have to make sure we line back up before we get started and still making sure we are offloading. With your fabric, you can paint as few or as many layers as possible. If you are going to be stippling, then you will get a little bit more coverage quicker than if you were swirling. So you could potentially get away with one layer of stippling. Just be mindful as you're going that you have about the same amount of coverage. So if you only want to do one layer, you'll want to keep an eye on how much coverage you have with your paint so you don't have to go back and do it again, especially if you are not using a repositionable adhesive and if your stencil is not stuck down. Because let's be honest, lining up stencils on projects is probably one of the worst things, right? <laughs> it's one of my least favorite things. I was never a peeker peeking under the stencil to see how my project was because I was always so afraid that I would not be able to get my stencil relined back up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something that's going on right now. We're at the end of my board. So now that I'm at the end, I started going through and where the edge of my board is, I'm starting to get a little line. So I need to pull back my stencil you can see this looks really good. Nice little stress-free zone that we are stenciling. I'm gonna push my board to the other side of my pot holder, bring my stencil back, and then we can finish our other side. Okay, so now we have our stress-free zone painted. I'm going to pull back the stencil, pull out this little surface, and look how cute, cute and easy, really simple project. While I was painting this, I was also thinking about how cute it would be if you had a stencil that had some kitchen words on it and said baking, you could put baking zone on there. We did the stress-free because we are going to actually do this on two projects. So we have some things we wanna show you about painting the same design on different surfaces and how to reuse your stencil. So how cute would it be to give this to a friend, put a little dish towel in there, maybe some little cooking utensils, and there you have a little stress-free gift for the kitchen. So now we're ready for project number two. We are going to use the stress-free zone, part of our stencil again, and we are going to paint on a little block that we had lying around. It has already been painted on one side. We are going to paint the other side of it. So we always want to start when we are painting on dimensional lumber with a little sanding, just to make it nice and smooth. We're just using a 3M sanding block. You can grab these off Amazon. We like to have these around with a couple of different grits. This one has been used quite a bit, but is still doing the job. When you are sanding, you always want to go with the grain of the wood. All right, quick and easy. Now we do need to base coat this. So I tried to find the color that was similar to the one that looks like was used. This is number 43. 
I'm also going to be use, using 79 and 28 on this. So if you have a Studio R12 paint color guide, check out those colors. It's a really cool guide. We have people asking us all the time, what color are you painting with and what paint do you use? We use Sherwin-Williams because we use a lot of paint here and we can buy it in bulk. So we have on the paint color guide, our numbers, the Sherwin-Williams number, numbers, the deco art numbers, the hex code, all kinds of really good information. On the last project, I used 46 as my color. We are going to start with our base coat. I'm using a poly foam brush. The type of poly foam brush that you use does matter. We have a video showing and explaining why. They're not all made the same. A lot of ones that you get at the, um, the dollar stores, the ones that are seem really cheap, sometimes can be. They're not really ever expensive brushes, but they aren't made the same. I'm just gonna do one quick coat. When you are base coating, you always want to pull towards you at the edge or sweep away at the edge so that you are not making a mess on the edges. Since this is the same color, it doesn't quite matter. You could do several layers here. I'm just going to do one quick layer. I like that the grain of the wood is still showing through. To make sure it's dry, it will be not cool to touch and it won't be sticky. So we will use our blow dryer here just for a second. Okay, had a drink of coffee, got my base coat dried, now it's time to stencil. So we are going to use the same stencil that we already used. The beauty of Mylar stencils is that they are reusable. You do not have to wash them every time, but after a few uses, if you are using the same stencil, you will want to wash it. You'll start to notice a buildup of the paint and you might even start to notice that your letters aren't looking as crisp and sharp because of that buildup. So once again, you can center this, you can eyeball it, you can use our, let's see if I can find our T-square. You could use this to mark off your surface to show exactly where center is. I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to put this in the bottom right hand corner just because I think it'd be real cute there. I'm going to grab a piece of tape. Since I have a solid surface here, I can go ahead and tape this down. And this is also going to potentially help with the prevention of ghosting so that we don't ghost up onto those lines. So ghosting is when you're painting and you accidentally quit paying attention and you get paint somewhere that you don't want it. So I am going to do a drop shadow here just to make a little bit of pop for my words. So I'm going to grab another small brush. This is the 3 8 inch and I'm going to start with black. I'm coming over to my paper towel, swirling, wiping off the paint, offloading, just so we don't have a lot on there. And then coming to my project and really, really, really lightly swirling just to get a little base of a black background so that our words really pop off of this project. So we use the stress-free for the oven mitt, which would be super cute, stress-free stress in the kitchen. For some people it's stress-free, for others it is very stressful. But I thought this one would be super cute if you put it in your bathroom, if you love to get a bath in the evening. I know bathtub decor is a super popular thing right now. You could also put it in your powder room or just a room that makes you feel good. I'm a yoga instructor. So I would love this in my little area that I do yoga at home, my little stress-free zone. I'm gonna peel this back. So you can see we have just a little bit of black paint. I'm going to do one more layer. I just really want my black paint to pop off the background. Okay, one more layer. And once again, you can swirl or you can stipple. I'm swirling here on our harder surface. 
We love the swirl because it does really light layers and this is one of our keys to preventing the bleeding under that everybody hates so much. It's so frustrating to, especially when you do a really beautiful background or have a project you really love or if you're making a gift for someone, to realize that your lines aren't sharp, you bled under, it's a travesty. We do have videos on ideas for fixing mistakes. So we do have ways that you can do it. We just know it stinks when you do. I'm gonna check this in the water. Every time we're done with a color, we put our brush in the water. We have videos on washing brushes. One of the tips for not bleeding under is using a dry brush. So that's something you wanna think about if you're doing small projects like this. I've already used two brushes. I'm getting ready to go into my third. I have a few more that I'm going to use. So I have a ginormous pile of brushes over here to use. If you don't have a ton of brushes, then you might want to think about the colors that you are going to choose. You could potentially use the brush for multiple colors, depending on if you're working in the same color scheme or what colors you're working on. So you could go ahead and do your backgrounds Use the brush with the black paint for all of them if you wanna do black paint for your stenciling. Just something to maybe plan out before you get started so you don't have to wait for your brush to dry after you wash it, because that could take an entire day. And then you're gonna maybe lose momentum if you're anything like me. Now we're gonna peel this off. We have our stress freeze in, which is actually really cool. We could just leave it like this. This could be a nice little man cave decor but I'm gonna show you a quick lesson on drop shadowing. So we have our stencil lined up. I am going to, to make my drop shadow, scooch this over a little bit to the left and lift it up a little bit. So now I can see green all around my stress-free zone. This is where my white paint or my this is actually like a cream paint is going to go. And then we're gonna just have a little bit of black peeking out the bottom. Since I'm painting white over top of black, it does take quite a bit more coverage. So now I'm coming into a stipple because the stipple will cover more quicker. However, you do have to be mindful that you are still wiping off your paint quite a bit before you come over to your project. When you are stippling, you are pushing the paint up into your brush quite a bit more than if you are swirling. So more paint does stay in the brush. The brush does stay a little bit more wet, which can increase your chances of bleeding under. Okay, so we're gonna do a little peek here. I'm not gonna do a big peek because I don't wanna peel off the tape. However, it's looking really good. The black isn't completely covered, which is a really pretty look that we could just leave as it is. But I wanna show you how we can make the letters really pop with another layer of paint and with that drop shadow. Another tip for when you are stippling. So when you're swirling, the paint typically dries really, really fast because we are just doing a really light layer. However, we're using a bit more paint when we are stippling. So if the paint is not dry, when you come back to do your second layer, you might have to hit your project with the blow dryer just to get that paint dry. If it is not dry, you are going to dig holes in the paint, which is going to make you really sad because then it's gonna start pulling the paint away. So then what you're going to have is just a little circle that's going to start going back to your black paint. So we really wanna make sure that's nice and dry before we get on there with our next, our next coat or our next layer. We had someone ask us recently if when we are adding 
paint to our brush if we can go to our offload pile absolutely so when we are offloading this paint is going to build up i have a real little spot here that has some i'm going to call it standing paint and we can just go to that and put that on our brush if you're getting down to the end of the paint that you have on your palette all right are we ready for the big reveal and Voila, we have a little tiny stress-free zone piece of decor for wherever you are stress-free in your life. Are you ready for our third project? We are going to paint a teeny tiny gift bag with the words, bubble your troubles away. How cute would this be to paint on here, bubble your troubles away, and then put in some bath bombs, some little foot scrub, something cute for a friend. Maybe they're having a bad day, maybe you're having a bad day, and you just want to give a nice cute gift. So we are putting our stencil on our bag. Now our bag is just the teeny tiny slightest bit smaller than this stencil. So we do have on each side a little bit that is not going to get painted. I am completely okay with that. If you're not, grab a bigger bag. If you are painting on paper and you are going to use tape, be sure to put it on a piece of fabric first, like your apron or your jeans, and then put it on your, your paper. If you do not put it on your fabric first, then it has a risk of ripping and peeling the paper and you don't want that after you've painted. So this kind of just takes the sticky away so that it's not quite as sticky, but it will still stick. With this bag, it is not super flat because it has handles. So once again, we will want to hold this down. I just had a great idea. Since we're doing bubbles, let's do bubbles on the background of this. We're gonna take this off. I love how the creative process works. So we have a little stencil that looks like bubbles. I'm going to use color number 62 and paint some little blue bubbles. I just laid this down. There's no real rhyme or reason. I just wanna paint a few little blue bubbles here on the background. You could do them all. You could pick and choose a few. You could make it more random if you wish and just move it around and wherever it lands, it lands. That's what we love about stencils is that it's really what you want to make of it. It does not have to be perfect. There is no real right or wrong, except for when it comes to um, what you paint with. We definitely, we definitely recommend the dome brush, something with a dome rather than a flat brush. But other than that, it's the world is your oyster. I think that's the saying. So look how quick that was, was what? 10 seconds of me chatting. And now we have the super cute bubbles on the background of our project. Come back over here, make sure our paper towels don't get in our paint and line up our stencil wherever you want it. I'm kind of using the little edges that are peeking off to help me line it up. The B and the E are both off just a little bit. We will want to hold the stencil down. So we're using the black paint again. So this would have been a really good time to go ahead and do two projects at once. Paper is going to be very similar to fabric when it comes to not being able to fix mistakes. You can stipple or swirl here, whichever you prefer. We have some videos that I've done on painting Christmas cards and painting gift wrap. So we have lots of videos on painting on paper just to give you some different ideas of how you can use your stencils so that you're not just painting on a square surface all the time. So I am using the same side of my paper towel. 
I'm using a black paint now, so it's not going to be a huge deal, but I did find myself offloading in the same spot that my blue was. Depending on what colors you are using, you might not want to offload in the same spot. Then you can mix your paints. If you only have a few brushes, it might make you really sad if you have to chuck a brush because you mixed your paints and now the paint isn't what colors you want it to be. So do be careful. So you can see how quickly my paint dried. Once I went from top to bottom, it's already dry. So now I'm going over my second layer. We love these tiny projects because they do not take a lot of time. If you have to get a gift for a friend, or if you just wanna do something quick and easy, you don't have time to run out and grab a gift bag or grab a card, you can just make your own. And then, how cool, it's gonna, it's gonna mean more to everybody anyway. All right, so I did two layers. I'm going to peel this off, and voila. Look how stinking cute that is, and it didn't take any time. We have the bubbles in the background, we have the stencil on the front, and it's super adorable. Are you ready for our fourth and final fun mini project? This time we are doing a card. So this is going to be very similar rules for what we did with our bag. And once again, I am going to use a pattern stencil. I'm going to use some teeny tiny checks here. Going to line them up. So there's some different ways that you can do this. Our stencil is bigger than our surface. So what that means is we can make sure we are lining it up straight with how we want it. So you could line up the bottom of the stencil with the bottom of the paper. However, I want my checks to be at the bottom of the stencil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one check down and line it up so that the very bottom of that check is going to be where I start. The cool thing about this is since it is a little bit bigger, we can just tape our entire project down to our surface, down to our table, and then nothing is going to move. I'm also gonna tape this bottom piece here if you have a nice surface and that you're painting on that you don't want to get paint on, you'll probably want to lay something down. We like to make a mess here. Once again, I'm using black. I, um, actually, I'm not. Let's use different colors. Let's use, in this one, we're going to use 57 and 75. So they are a teal and a blue. We're going to do teal for our checks. Just putting out a little bit. You can see I got a little too carried away with the light blue that I did. Had too much paint. Offload, as always. And this time I, um, so let's talk about something else. I only want three rows of checks. We're just gonna let this sit here and probably dry out on us, but it's okay, because I forgot a step that you need to know about. I only want three rows of checks. So I need to use a piece of tape or something to mask with so that I don't go over those three layers of checks. All right, let's get some more paint on here. And we're just going to lightly swirl. Once again, you can also stipple one here. One thing about painting on the paper is that if it gets really wet, then your paper can kind of start to curl and fold. So we, I like to do the swirling here so that I'm using less paint so that it doesn't get as wet of a project. However, you can always, unless you're in a big hurry, set it down underneath the book once you're completely done, let it dry, let it flatten out. And once that paint dries, it starts to flatten back out. Okay, so we have our swirls here. We're just going to do a nice dusty layer of checks. You can continue to do more layers if you wish to get them nice and bright. Okay, so I made a boo-boo. I did not tape very well. So let's think of something we can do. I have this little stripe stencil 
um, and this is going to help save my project. So I'm using my stripe stencil. I'm going to grab my tape and I'm going to make sure that I tape off a little bit better this time. I'm gonna tape both sides of the stripe that I'm, so I have the stripe that I'm using and I'm taking, taping off on both sides of the ones that I'm not using. And I'm going to do a little bit better job of taping than I did on the last one. Because the last one I did not tape properly and I had ghosting, so now I have the start of a fourth check. So you could do a fourth check or you could make lemons into lemonade and make a little stripe here. Now, notes when you're making stripes, don't go all the way to the edge. See, I left a little spot over at the edge and I did not go over there because if you do, you're going to get a really bold line. Remember when we were painting on the pot holder and I got to the edge of that board and I started to get a bold line? We don't want that when we're painting stripes. So we always just want to paint almost to the edge, but not entirely. So now I'm gonna make sure this is nice and feathered in and it looks even across. And there we go. That's a little bit better, right? And it actually looks pretty cute. So we have our border ready. This time we are going to do no worries. So we're actually going to use a part of a part of a quote on this stencil. And I'm kind of glad we did the line because now I can put the no worries right above the line and I can use the stripe on this, what we've painted to line up. So all of our stencils are laser cut, which means the lines are really precise. So you can use them as straight edges for your projects. And once again, since we're doing paper here, I am going to make sure I put my tape on my apron just to get a little sticky off so I'm not making a mess. We always like to tape in two places, typically on opposite edges. And I'm also gonna tape down here just because we saw my little bit of ghosting. I'm just going to prevent that extra cautiously by taping off here. I also don't want that dot. So you can do one of two things. You can pay attention when you're painting or if you're like me, you can add an extra piece of tape just to be safe. So what happens if you only have a couple of brushes and you want to use multiple paint colors? If you don't have time to wait, this project, it will be okay to use the same brush because they're in a similar color family. So I will come to my paper towel and I'm going to get off as much teal paint as I can. Look how much paint is still in this brush. Okay, I'm gonna pick up the blue and I'm gonna to come to the side. So I still have a bit of blue and teal together. I'm gonna to do this a couple of times until it, we get to the color we want. If you don't want any teal, keep going until the teal comes out. I don't hate the teal in it because it's going to kind of make it into a family and work together. So now I'm going to come to my project I'm going to start swirling. When you're swirling, you are using such a really light pressure. Like it kind of makes me want to whisper when I talk about it because that's how light we are pushing on this project. Barely any pressure at all. We're really just rubbing the brush right over top of it. Since we did a really light layer, of the checks, we are also going to do a really light layer here. But if you would like something really bold and bright and want it to pop, then you just continue to add on to your layers. You could also add glitter. You could add some standoffs. There are so many fun things that you can do. So take a look at it. Here's our little no worries card. If you're having a friend who's having a day, make them a quick card with parts of your stencils. We use three stencils on this teeny tiny card and it turned out great. If you like this video and want to see more fun ways you can use stencils like this on your DIY craft projects, 
make sure to subscribe to Studio R12 Stencils and ring the bell so you can be notified anytime we add new videos with tips, tricks, and techniques. Thank you.